This is part 2 of the introduction video on the module Wideband Gap Devices for Power Converter Designers. In part 1, we looked at uh, a boost converter example to show qualitatively the sources of conduction loss and switching loss in a power converter. Uh, in, in part 2, we will look at the same boost converter implemented using a state-of-the-art IGBT device to uh, quantitatively determine the switching and conduction loss for that application. Then we will discuss the uh, various trade-offs involved in the design of uh, power semiconductor devices and uh, very briefly mention how the, um, the wide band gap of silicon carbide and gallium nitride uh, favor the trade-offs uh, for those devices for uh, high voltage and uh, high frequency applications. This is a, a state-of-the-art 1200 volts um, uh, IGBT built as a, a latest generation high-speed device. Uh, if this is used in, a, in our boost convert application with a specification of uh, 200 volts input stepping up to 600 volts output um, with a load current of 8 amperes, so that will correspond to an input current of uh, 24 amperes. Uh, so that works out to be a power level of uh, 8 times 600 or 4800 watts. So th this figure shows the uh, the energy losses, the switching losses for both the uh, turn off um, losses here and turn on losses. And this last curve is the sum of the two losses, the total switching energy loss uh, corresponding to a 600 volts uh, operation and for various collector currents. Now using this information, uh, in our example, if you use a switching frequency of just 10 kilohertz, then the corresponding switching losses, uh, total switching losses, can be calculated as shown. So we look at um, under uh, the given current of 24 amperes, um, if you look at the total energy loss at the 600 volts um, operation, it comes out to be about 4.6 millijoules. So that times the switching frequency of 10 kilohertz gives a total power loss of 46 watts, which is roughly 1% uh, of the total power. And uh, this is uh, probably acceptable. If you increase the switching frequency to 100 kilohertz, then the total energy loss per switching transition, uh, turn on and turn off together, is still the same 4.6 millijoules. But the average power loss now is uh, this energy times 100 kilohertz, 110 to the 3. So that is uh, 460 watts or almost 10% of the total output power. And clearly this is um, a not a practical uh, solution. Uh, especially considering that there are other um, losses, conduction loss in IGBT itself, uh, in the diode uh, and in the passives. For the conduction losses, we look at the figure that shows the uh, uh, collector emitter voltage versus the collector current. And for our specification of um, switch currents being 24 amperes, uh, if you look at the corresponding VCE, it is about 2.5 volts. So the conduction losses would be the uh, forward drop times the current. Uh, and for the switching current, it is uh, um, this value multiplied by the duty ratio, uh, which is for the given 200 to 600 volts step up, the D is 0.67. So the conduction loss comes out to be 40.2 watts. Um, and that is about, again, roughly less than 1% of the uh, total output power. So this is uh, one of the advantages of IGPT, that the conduction losses are significantly smaller. A major limiting factor for power devices is the junction temperature. And it is especially true for silicon devices where the maximum junction temperature cannot exceed um, um, 150 to 175 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is the absolute limit and for reliability reasons, practical designs operate well below these uh, maximum numbers. Now for the device that we have been considering, this is a plot that shows how the collected current has to be derated um, with increasing switching frequencies because of the, the thermal limit. So under, uh, say, about 10 kilohertz switching frequency uh, for this switching current, you can have uh, almost 100 amperes collector current, uh, whereas as you approach 100 kilohertz, the collector current, even the switching current, has to be um, just above uh, 30 amperes, limited to about 30 amperes, 
and around 200 kilohertz it is um, less than 20 amperes. This is one metric uh, in which the uh, silicon carbide devices uh, far uh, exceed the uh, silicon devices. So, um, because of the wide band gap, the uh, silicon carbide devices can um, operate under uh, well above two to three times the maxim maximum junction temperature of silicon devices. And this, uh, together with the much higher thermal conductivity, makes uh, silicon carbide an excellent device for. Um, high temperature application uh, as well as uh, it helps in uh, reducing the size and cost of uh, thermal management systems. Another source of loss um, though not very significant in, for most of the applications is the, the gate drive loss. Uh, this figure shows for the given uh, uh, IGBT device um, the gate charge versus the gate emitter voltage. So assuming that we operate at 15 volts for the gate, uh, it requires uh, 120 nanocoulombs each time we charge the, the gate capacitance to turn on the device. So the this gate charge times the this peak gate voltage um, corresponds to the energy and therefore that times the switching frequency gives the average gate drive power loss which for this device works out to be uh, very low 0.2 uh, watts. So, this is negligible for uh, this application, um, but for uh, very low, very low voltage and very low power, but extremely high frequency applications um, like point of load converters, which operate at um, uh, tens of megahertz, then the um, uh, the gate capacitance and the uh, uh, the gate drive loss uh, can become significant. So, given the past uh, discussions. Uh, it would obviously be uh, highly desirable to come up with uh, a device design that simultaneously minimizes the uh, conduction loss, the switching loss, the gate wave loss and so on. Uh, but that is not uh, possible because uh, from a device design perspective, these are conflicting requirements. So a power device design is really a trade-off among several of these competing requirements. Uh, specifically between breakdown voltage rating and uh, forward drop or the on-state resistance and the switching speeds. Um, so if you need um, a high breakdown voltage then uh, especially in uh, unipolar devices uh, we need to have a large uh, drift region um, which um, significantly increases the resistance the bipolar devices like the, um, the BJTs or the PN um, junction diodes, they um, result in a smaller forward drop or on-state resistance, uh, especially with this um, conductivity modulation. However, the bipolar devices uh, operate with the, um, uh, with the injection of uh, minority carriers um, and these minority carriers have to be removed when switching the device from the on state to the off state and this can be done by reverse current in the gate drive circuit or um, by the electron hole recombination. Um, this uh, makes the switching speeds significantly slower uh, and for in the case of diodes makes the reverse uh, recovery process uh, longer. The unipolar devices or the majority carrier devices they offer um, very fast switching speeds um, because there are no uh, minority carriers to be removed. Um, however, the uh, unipolar devices, uh, especially at um, high break and voltages, feature uh, very large uh, resistance uh, because of the higher drift region uh, needed as discussed before. Uh, besides, uh, the uh, junction capacitance also depends on the, the particular design and the material and they can also have a big impact on the switching speed uh, as well as the uh, energy loss uh, corresponding to the stored junction capacitance uh, energy. So given these uh, design trade-offs, the current trend uh, using silicon material um, for uh, the passive diodes is to use uh, short key diodes for low voltage applications. Short key diodes are um, majority carrier devices and uh, as, as such they feature excellent uh, switching speeds they also have no reverse recovery which is a major advantage for um, uh, many power convert applications 
and um, importantly they also have very low forward drop uh, but um, these advantages especially the low forward drop they become less and less significant at um, voltages above um, 100 or 200 volts so for high voltage applications the uh, silicon devices employ um, the spin diodes which are um, minority carry devices and um, they have a relatively lower forward drop at these high voltages however they have uh, low switching speeds and uh, the uh, major issue with the uh, pin diodes is the large reverse recovery. In terms of active devices, um, with the uh, silicon material, uh, currently MOSFETs are the device of choice for low voltage applications, um, around 400, 500 volts. These are majority carry devices and as such have uh, excellent switching characteristics and uh, they do offer uh, very low resistance at low voltages but as the voltage increases uh, above a few hundred volts the, um, the on-state resistance increases drastically um, therefore for uh, higher voltage applications um, clearly above 600 volts the IGBT dominates uh, this is a bipolar device they have um, um, uh, lower forward drop compared to MOSFETs um, and uh, they also have um, a larger switching transition times therefore they are limited in the switching frequency uh, they also have another uh, issue called the current tailing where um, a, a turn off the current drops to a low value very quickly but then tails off very slowly and uh, having an additional switching loss component so that brings us to a brief discussion on the wide band gap devices so first of all, what is the band gap? Band gap is the energy required to excite electrons from the valence band of the material to its uh, conduction band, uh, as shown in these examples of an insulator, semiconductor, and a, and a conductor. So for a silicon, the band gap uh, is 1.12 electron volts, and um, uh, silicon carbide 3.26 electron volts and 3.39 electron volts for the GAN qualify the silicon carbide and gallium nitrate as uh, wide band gap um, devices. So almost all the superior characteristics of silicon carbide and gallium nitrate, they are directly attribu attributable to this uh, wider band gap. Uh, in particular, the uh, higher electric field strength uh, as shown here. The electric field strength, the breakdown strength uh, for silicon is uh, this 0.23 uh, megavolts per centimeter versus um, uh, almost 10 times higher breakdown strength for silicon carbide and uh, even higher for gallium nitrate. So what this entails is that um, for a given, um, first of all it is much, e much um, easier to make uh, high voltage devices and for a given breakdown voltage these devices require much narrower um, a drift region. Uh, another major advantage um, attributable to the wider band gap is the higher junction temperature capability. We saw that for silicon devices, the maximum um, junction temperature is 150 degrees Celsius versus um, um, about 400 degrees C for silicon carbide devices. So due to their um, significantly higher electric field strength, the uh, weight band gap devices can have um, can support larger breakdown voltages with a very small uh, drift region width. Uh, this uh, leads to um, lower on-state resistance. So, therefore, uh, one of the biggest advantage of um, weight band gap semiconductors is that they can um, offer very low on-state resistances even for high voltage uh, applications, and um, uh, this tends to favor the development of um, unipolar devices um, because now they can have low on state resistance as well in addition to their um, uh, very fast switching characteristics. So much efforts have been made on developing the um, uh, unipolar devices, MOSFETs for active switches and uh, short key barrier diodes for um, uh, passive diodes. So we have um, commercial uh, 1.2 kV and 1.7 kV silicon carbide MOSFETs uh, with um, um, very low on-state resistance, for example, uh, 80 milliohms for the 1200 volts parts. 
Um, so we have um, um, 1200 volts and 1.7 kV short key diodes as well. And uh, in, the, in the gallium nitrate MOSFETs, we have reached um, commercial devices of up to 650 volts. The uh, short key diodes um, based on silicon carbide have um, um, already uh, very widely displaced um, high voltage um, silicon diodes um, in uh, applications like uh, power factor correction circuits. Um, the um, silicon carbide MOSFETs, they have been um, uh, used um, in um, uh, several hundred kilohertz uh, applications. Uh, they have also been um, commercialized in um, PV inverters and um, such applications. Uh, with GAN MOSFETs, especially at the lower voltage end, um, uh, converters uh, featuring uh, tens of megahertz or even higher have been uh, developed uh, with, with good efficiency. The Valigas figure of merit is commonly used um, to determine the benefits, um, the impact of semiconductor material, uh, especially on the on-state resistance. Uh, it is given as uh, this denominator here, it is the product of the permittivity, the electron mobility, and the cube of the critical uh, breakdown field. Now, because of the uh, higher um, E critical field, the um, uh, silicon carbide uh, as well as the gallium nitrate are uh, um, significantly better than the um, figure of merit for silicon. So silicon carbide is about 500 times better and gallium nitrate is, is, is even higher than, um, so about five times higher than silicon carbide. So that shows the, um, uh, the potential for these two wide band gap devices for the power converter switches. And this is uh, further confirmed by looking at the data sheets of uh, a state-of-the-art 1200 volts of silicon IGBT with that of uh, 1200 volts silicon carbide MOSFET uh, of uh, almost identical current ratings. So the plot shows the switching energy loss as a function of the current for both of these devices. And um, um, so the top two are the um, E on and uh, E off for the silicon IGBT and the bottom two correspond to the uh, silicon carbide. So for example, if you look at um, around the rated current of 25 amperes, the, um, uh, the silicon IGBT has uh, about 2000 microjoules versus um, uh, about 200 or less microjoules for the silicon carbide. So uh, in, order of, in order of magnitude decrease in the energy loss, uh, so this can lead to um, um, uh, about 10 times higher switching frequency uh, with the same efficiency. Uh, and even the uh, on-state drop are comparable. Um, um, so this is an 80 milliohms um, device. So at um, 24 amperes, that will result in um, uh, only around um, uh, around 2 volts drop, which is what we saw for the um, uh, for this uh, silicon IGBT as well in an, in an earlier slide. So in summary, uh, silicon devices tend to use um, bipolar devices for high voltage uh, applications uh, because of the uh, increased uh, on-state resistance for uh, unipolar devices. Uh, whereas uh, the wide band gap devices, because of the higher um, uh, electric field strength, they can have much narrower uh, drift region, uh, allowing the use of um, uh, unipolar devices, the majority carrier devices, even for high voltage applications with very low on-state resistance.